Okay, hi, hello, my name is Abbas. Uh, I'm, on, I'm here on the behalf of my, my amazing team members from Thunder Force, uh, Hart, Mohammed, Nuvia, and Zahra, uh, who I've been working for the past 24 hours uh, without any break. Uh, so the data set that we have been working on was the, the stroke data set. So basically we have a binary classification of two imaginary movement, left and right, three patients, pre and post uh, rehabilitation sessions, and we wanted to actually increase the performance of these PCI systems. So we first thought about that, okay, what are the different categories, different area of these PCI systems that we can actually improve? And so we thought that the first thing could be reducing the number of channels. So it's very valuable if you can uh, have the same accuracy with lower number of channels. And also we wanted to increase the reaction time. So in order to uh, receive the feedback, uh, feedback and also make a decision faster. And of course, the classification accuracy, which actually we mainly focus on that one. So we use several methods for feature extraction and classification. So for instance, we use the well-known FPCSP. Uh, we also uh, combine temporal and frequency features. We also apply time frequency analysis wavelength and also nonlinear features. And most importantly, the Riemannian features, which recently has been very powerful in the BCI. And uh, we also tried an end-to-end -end architecture such as EGNet, EGNet uh, in order to actually uh, perform the um, feature extraction and classification simultaneously. So at first, uh, this is the uh, visualization of the features extracted, extracted from the Riemannian uh, uh, analysis. So as you see, this is a Riemannian features uh, projected on the first on the first two principal components. As you can see, you can clearly see the differences between the train uh, between the left and right hand. So it's it's an easy task to actually discriminate between these two. But one important thing here is that, as you see, the distribution of the training data and the test data is the same. So this is something that uh, implies that we actually don't need, probably, uh, if the, uh, the, the classifier we train uh, on the training data would be efficient on the test data as well. So, and we don't need to apply some sort of uh, session transfer learning. Uh, so uh, the, for the idea of reducing the number of channels, for instance, we selected three channels, C, 3, 4, and CZ. And we extracted the wavelength transform and we feed it as a giant image into a convolutional neural network based on ResNet, which we, of course, modified the last uh, layers. Uh, but unfortunately, the result wasn't compatible with the other results that we got, which was better. And because of the time consuming nature of uh, this uh, method, we didn't report the results. We also, as I mentioned, tried EGNet. Basically, EG, the idea of EGNet is based on FVCSP. So you have one temporal convolution, which basically um, extract uh, the uh, different frequency, uh, uh, decompose the signal into the different frequency panels. We have a spatial filter and etc. So the EGNet result was nice, but uh, not again comparable with the others because the power of EGNet is actually when it's a generalized model, so we can use it for different paradigms. But we are actually interested to design a specific system for each individual in this data set. So this is the result of our analysis, so we can see uh, the, uh, the first step of our analysis was to, we wanted to replicate the result. So we already have been provided the result of the CSV and LDA by the GTEC, and we wanted to replicate that result. So we did the pre-processing and we replicated the result and we saw that actually our result in most of the cases is better than uh, the one provided by GTEC. And it, this actually reflects the quality of the pre-processing, which is a very important section. After that, we uh, tried different methods. As you see, the Riemannian method is one of the pr promising uh, methods because it's very fast and you can see it, uh, it receive a very high result. And also the using of the nonlinear features, this is also promising. FVCSV has been always powerful and here you can see the result. And also we combined uh, the wavelet features by uh, with or without special filtering with the LDA classifier. So as you see, in most of the cases, we actually managed to exceed the accuracies by uh, the two documents provided by uh, GTA. Okay, so this was the second part. The, the last part was, okay, what we can do about the reaction time. The idea that we use here is that we actually uh, selected a time window, for instance, four seconds, um, a constant time window for training the system. But for testing the system, we started with a time window of two seconds and we actually sweep this time window. And in each time window, we uh, uh, extracted the classification result. The classification algorithm can give us a confidence value, uh, which in most cases is a probability value. So how, how is it likely that, for instance, this signal belongs to class left or right? And we actually added these 
confidence value over different windows, and we actually uh, created a cumulative confidence. So it means that we start receiving signals from the user, and at some point, based on the threshold that we define, okay, how much confident do you want to be in order to uh, make your decision? Based on that threshold, we then generate our decision. So this is a hyperpointer. So we sweeped different values for this threshold. And as you see, for instance, for the threshold roughly around 4.5, we got the highest accuracy. And after that, you see, we are getting more signals because the reaction time is increases. So it means that we need a longer length of the signal to make a confident decision. Uh, so the reaction time increases, but also the accuracy decreases because we are receiving actually some of the information may, which may not be helpful for us. And yeah, this is my amazing team. I really enjoy working with them. We mostly use MATLAB, but for uh, neural network, we also use Python. And yeah, Thunderforce. 